So the title lecture, Illusions of Time. To be rhythmical, I believe that you need to be organized. You need to be structured with your choreography. You need to plan your choreography into two bar units, building up to four bar units, building up to eight bar units. This will not make you rhythmical, but it will make you organized. It'll give you an opportunity to create the rhythm from your soul, from your feelings, and from the music. So, counting the beats helps you to get structured, but it's not rhythmical. It's just a point. It's just a point. It's what you do in between the points and the taps that makes you rhythmical. By just going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, is not going to make you rhythmical. It just gives you a count beat. It's how you experience and how you create your feelings within the beats. It's like steps. We dance foot to foot. That's just a pattern. There's no rhythm, there's no feeling, there's no emotion there. It's what you do in between the steps that gives you the emotion, gives you the magic, gives you the excitement. So the steps are there as your guide, like the beats are there as your guide, but it's not rhythmical or expressive. And we'd like to dance for you a simple eight bar piece of tango. So could we play Punch and Judy, please? So, the beat values, it's eight bars, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, five, six, seven, eight. So that's just the counting, that's just to get yourself organized with the choreography, but as I said, it's not rhythmical. A quotation that I heard many years ago that I liked very much by a gentleman called John Delroy, who was a great teacher for many, many years, and he said, musical accuracy corrects technical error. Musical accuracy corrects technical error. You can read in between the words of that. So to put the emphasis onto your musicality is extremely important. So if we go through this figure one more time, we're going to start the process of becoming rhythmical. There's many opportunities, there's many ways of achieving rhythm. Some people are very fortunate that they can just feel the music. They just can sense it. Some people like to say different noises. Those people who are very natural, maybe you could leave the lecture then today, because you can do it very well. So, we're going to do it through creating strong accents and soft accents. So if we start from here, we're going to get 
A one, two, three, four, soft, two, three. A one, two, three, four, soft, two, three. One, two, three, four, soft, two, three. A one, two, and three, four, and soft, two, three. Okay, so we're starting a process of creating rhythm. We're starting a process of putting expressions into those beats. There's a description of crescendo and diminuendo, which means the crash. We can build up to an exciting finish by having it very soft in the beginning and building up. So if we try this, and we'll try to finish with a nice crescendo at the end. So we're going to get a strong two, three, four, easy. Strong two, three, four, easy. Strong two, three, four, easy. Strong two, and strong, and finish, and strong. So we can see we're building up towards something at the end. So, the audience, you are the audience. You have ears to listen to the music. And your eyes will see us as the music. I'll say that again. You, the audience, have your ears. You listen to that music, but your eyes see the music in us. So it's our responsibility as lecturers today, as demonstrators, or as competitors, to show you the music in the steps that you are listening to as well. As I say to my students, don't forget the judicator is listening to the same piece of music as you are, as you are dancing to. It's the same piece, so please express it in a very good way. So another opportunity of creating rhythm. I'm going to clap my hands, but really focus on the rhythm. Would you like to join me in clap? I'll do one more time. Okay, there were some very good ones. On that side. <laughs> they clap the most, you see. If I put numbers to those claps, I can go seven, eight, and one. I'm building up this crescendo. Seven, big pause, eight, and one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight and one. Should be a little bit easy now. This side should be okay, I think, now. I think this should be. You never know. Let's have a go. <laughs> Let's have a go. And seven, eight and one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight and one, two. Five, six, seven, eight and one. Very good. Oh, 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 oh. nice, nice. Another possibility of creating rhythm. I call it the missing beats rhythm because we're going to take some beats out. Instead of being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which makes it a bit monotone. So if I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three. Okay, this is organized, it's structured. But it's a bit monotone, isn't it? It's a bit boring. It's not really expressive. So I'm going to take beat number four away. And I'm also going to take beat number eight away. So you can have beat number four. They're just for you. And you can have beat number eight. Keep hold of them, though. So we're going to count. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. So from here, one, two, three, 
five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. So we can create a rhythm. Now, I'd like you to listen to a very famous tango. And I'd like you to listen to the beats. I'd like you to listen to the feeling of it. And see if you can notice something quite special about it. It was composed in 1965. It's been popular ever since. And it's got the simple title of Tango 65. Funnily enough, very imaginative of their names. What should we call this? Tango 62? No, no, that's not Tango. Tango 65. It's been around for a while. Would you like to play Tango 65? Okay, thank you. What I, I hear in that, I'm not saying it's the truth, but what I hear for my ears is the way it's been composed to also show the accents. They've also composed it with missing beats. They've also got one, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Could you just play that one more time and see if you can, sometimes if you close your eyes, you can hear it. Five, six, seven. One, two, three, five. Could we play from the beginning, sorry? Two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Thank you. Would you like to say that? to get that feeling, get that emotion inside you. Okay, we're gonna have a go. And. Two, three, five, six, seven. One, 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 two, three. Five, six, seven. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. One, two, three. Five, six, and seven. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. Okay. So the missing beats can help you very much to create a rhythm. So. Oh my God, I better walk, move on. So, I'd like now to move on to the waltz. And we used to practice to a very nice tune by Mr. Andy Williams called May Each Day. And one of the reasons we used to like to listen to it, I'd like you to find out. So would you play May Each Day, please? May each day in the week be a good day. May the Lord always watch okay, thank you. over you. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I it's some breakfast, I think. So this big piece of music, first of all. You probably noticed it's only a two-bar introduction, which catches many people out, because we're expecting a four-bar introduction. But the way he's singing it, he's singing the beautiful crescendo and diminuendo, beautiful. And that's why I particularly liked to dance to that, because I thought, there's an expert singer. If he can get it right, maybe I've got a chance, if I can follow his voice, to try to create that rhythm. So if you listen to it in a moment, what you'll hear is he's going, may each one, two, three, two, two, three, two, three. And to make an impact now, he goes silent. 
There's a silence. It, for two reasons. It's to go from the largest contrast of the smoothness to the loud coming in. And also, as by pure coincidence, he can take a breath to prepare because he's getting a bit tired now. So he can breathe. And a one, two, three, two, two, sorry about the singing, three, two, three, silence. And that silence, that magical moment of preparation so he can start to breathe this in to prepare for the strong one again. So he's got diminuendo in, ready for a crescendo coming, may each day. Coming stronger. So see if you can hear the strength of that, how he's fading you down. He's taking you down so that he can come strong again. Please. May each one and three silence. May each one two. And three. And may one, two, three, two. Three. Thank you. So it's already planned for you. So by having that piece of music, it doesn't make you rhythmical, but it gives you a chance if you try to follow it and you try to follow his breaths. And he's breathing, how he's doing this, how he's taking you down, ready to come in strong again. So, we'd like to dance for you a nice simple figure in the walls with another piece of music. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the highlights of this and how to create some rhythm within the walls. Okay, the other one please. Whichever that one is, it's the other one. Again, another opportunity to create rhythm because the beats are dead, they're lifeless. What I think about in the walls is splitting it up into three sections. I call them a preparation, a dynamic, and something that I call a celebration. So if you prepare well and you have your dynamics you can show a celebration within the waltz. So I believe that beat number four is your starting point. You're stretching up for beat five. You're going to lose the balance for five. You're losing it. You're losing it. Ready to have a powerful downswing of six. Six being the downswing resulting in the power of one, which is your drive action. Because we can't just drive on one. We need the preparation. If we're not preparing in beat five, if we're, if we're here for five, six is going to be late. And your opportunity to drive on one is going to be less. So feeling the preparation of your weight of four, stretching up, for beat number five, losing it, and six, one. Now from here, we can feel celebration, two, three, to produce the beautiful flight action. Two, 
into three. Two, three. Many people say the waltz is the two, three. Because without the swing, without the flight, you don't have the waltz. So it's releasing the weight. Two, three. And we all know how to spell two, don't we? Actually, I stole this from John Delroy. T-W-O-O-O-O. Two. To stretch the beat. Feeling two to three. So make sure you're preparing. Make sure that you are getting your body in a good position, ready to feel that you can release your weight into a drive action, into a flight action. Oh, I've got two minutes, my God. I've got to do a foxtrot and quick step. Jesus, I better be quick. Slow foxtrot. How to create magical timing. How to create a sense of feeling within the timing. I believe it's important to split up your body timing to your foot timing. So you can have a foot timing and you can have a body timing. Because the, the timing of the figure will not give you any rhythmical interpretation. If you dance slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. That's the timing structure of the figure saying that it's two beats, it's physically two beats on the first step and it's a one beat and a one beat. But it's lifeless, there's no expression. You as the instruments, you as the dancers need to bring it alive. So a timing possibility, it's only what Anne and myself have been thinking about, is to think from here, the timing is of the feet is going to be slow, slow and. Slow, slow and. To be able to feel the lowering on the slow. Sometimes I practice slightly different than that and extend the last and to feel slow, slow and move. Slow, slow and move. Sometimes it takes you out of the timing, but it's a gamble you have to take sometimes. Sometimes you need to take chances to become special. If you're always spot on and perfect, it's not always special. So there's the feet timing, but now we've got the body timing. So the body, because we've got rotation, because we've had a wind up, ready to have a weight release, we've got a wind up here. So the body's got to go from this position to this position on the first step. We've also got a downswing, which is also going to create an energy. So we've got a downswing as well. The second part, the downswing is finished. We're going to commencing the rise. So it's slowing down. I don't think it's quite as slow yet, but it's definitely not the quick. So I call that a medium timing. I know there's no such thing, but it's just for to give it a name so I can relate to it. And at the end, for sure, because of the upswing, the slowness of the upswing, the flighting that you want to show and create to feel flight at the end, I would definitely call that the slow. So wordings, because they're only words, but still your feelings that the most important thing would be thinking quick medium slow, quick medium slow, quick medium slow, quick medium slow, to have a quick release into a slowing down version, could you say it's a slower version, into the flighting version. Okay, so we're having a release of weight with a timed foot action. So I suppose that's the tricky part timing your feet, and then timing your body. But if a little bit of practice, it can happen. So you want to be feeling from here. Slow, slow and slow, slow and. Quick, medium, slow. Quick, medium, slow. 